So today what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go over something a little different than what I've been doing. We're going to leave the Funky Congas uh, episode uh, series for a little while, just briefly, and then we're going to we're going to come to some frame drumming and some ambient stuff, so shakers and rattlers and just playing in type of a band like setting. So today what we're going to talk about is the frame drum. So I have a frame drum over here. This is actually a Cooperman frame drum, Glenn Velez model. And I want to talk about frame drums mainly because, well, I'm going to use a frame drum. It doesn't necessarily have to be it. But I want to talk about this because frame drums are a great way for those that are playing, let's say, in a band setting. And, and here I'm talking about a context of contemporary worship or in church. It, it, this can apply anywhere, but I want to use that as my, my pivot, my, my point of reference. So it's, let's say you have some bongos and you want to get into congas or some of the larger drums or you're thinking about getting into more percussion. You're playing shakers and tambourines and yeah, maybe you have a pair of bongos or something like that, but you want to get more. Um, you can now this drum is a little more expensive but frame drums in general going through beautiful companies like Mino or Remo they can be uh, more inexpensive than a professional grade conga on average depending on where you're buying them especially if you're going to Guitar Center or your local uh, uh, music shop or online you can generally get a frame drum for uh, a much more uh, uh, and more inexpensive cost than a large conga so it's a great way to get into the world of hand drumming or to increase your current setup or perhaps get some hand drums in your hybrid acoustic setup well uh, with your drum set or with your cajon so I want to uh, use the frame drum as a way of talking about that and I'm going to show you a couple ways that you can use the frame drum almost like a conga. Now, the way I'm holding it right now, the way I'm holding this frame drum is in the upright position, which takes a little more practice, a little more getting used to. I basically have my thumb cupped in to where you see there's a cutout made for the frame drum. Many frame drums, most will have a cutout uh, made for it like that. I don't wanna get too much into the technical uh, aspect of playing. There's so many great videos out there uh, if you would like me to get more into this, if this is something that it would be good for future ep episodes or videos, let me know. Hit a comment, hit a like, and on that note, don't forget to subscribe if you like the channel, if you like what you're seeing in here. So, one of the things I want to talk about in the frame drum is some ways of adding layers to a song. So I'm going to talk about that first and then some different positions like using a snare stand and a bongo stand to mount your frame drum. Okay. Now, in holding it, I like to hold and play in the drum in the upright position. However, if you use a stool, you can. I'm seated, so it's easier to do this when you're sitting, but if you're playing standing, you can get a uh, medium-sized stool and put your foot on it, and you can play it in the lap style sit, uh, position. So where you have one hand up here playing, and then your open hand, dominant hand playing over here on the drum. The other way to play it is between the legs, just like bongos. And you can just put it between the legs, uh, between, you can, there you go. You can put place it between your legs, like so, and play. Okay? So, there's many different ways to hold it, but in this, for sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna hold it just like this. All right, now, sometimes, when I'm playing the frame drum, before I may go into an actual rhythm, I may use the frame drum like an actual shaker. So that's another possibility of the frame drum. This one has a nice, soft, synthetic head that's coated to give a natural feel, like a leather, like the actual skin of a drum. And the great thing about that is it sounds great with brushes or with your hand. You can use some Vic Firth uh, brushes or some brushes. If you use steel brushes, that'll have a certain sound. If you use if you use plastic brushes, that'll have another sound. But I want to talk about using your hand. So you can use your hand to actually play like a shaker and simulate that. And I'll do that with the song here in a moment. So let's say the song starts and I might just go like this. Now way I, the way I place my hand is going to change 
the sound of the brush sound or shaker sound. If I'm using more of my palm and pressing in harder, it may make it harsher. If I use more of my fingertips and lighter, there's less there's less flesh on the actual drum, so it may change the tone, the sound of the tone. Sometimes it may not do a shaker, but an actual ambient effect. If I go closer to the outside, I get more of the ring. Wow. With the... So it, it adds that ring with the actual shaker sound. If I stay in the, in the center, I get more of the actual, just the brushing of my hand on the actual drum so that's a great way we could just you could do this on a cajon as well with a frame drum for some songs this works perfectly now I don't even have to pick up a shaker or put a shaker down and I can still stay on the drum I can do this shaking type deal with like with a shaker and with the hand that's holding it Takes a little bit of practice. Now I might do that really light and it just adds a light touch behind the, that song, okay? So that's just another way, some other ideas to play with the frame drum. You can do the same thing if you're playing in the seated position like this or on your lap. Now you have this other hand. Okay, so just a couple of ideas there. Now, sometimes in the beginning of a song, I will play a rhythm that is reminiscent of a two and four backbeat, second beat, fourth beat, if we're in four, four. In the very beginning, I may just emphasize the four, the fourth beat, and the first beat. So the first beat being a doom, which will be the bass. And for this sake, I'm just gonna use my thumb for this video towards the, not center, but a little bit further up, searching for the sound that I want, holding it a little bit with my fingers to mute it so it's not too much a wow, but a. Okay, and then I may use the fourth beat. So if it's one, two, three, four. Everything else is just touches. One, two, three, Three, four, and this, I'm just striking the edge of the drum, is like a, on the fourth beat, like a snare, like an open snare, without the snare, the snare is turned off. Now, different ways to mount the drum. Let's say you're playing sit, seated, and you have some shakers and bongos, you have some, uh, ta a tambourine. Well, if you can get a snare stand, then you can actually place the frame drum flat right on the snare stand just like this underneath you'll just adjust your snare snare stand so that it will hold the frame drum and now because it's underneath in here like this you're not gonna be wailing away like a conga but you're just gonna play just like a bongo or a conga and the rubber underneath is going it's not touching the head of the drum underneath it's just on the bottom, if you see it underneath there, if you can see that, and I also at another angle for you, it's just touching the frame of the drum, okay? So it's not really affecting the sound, at least not in a negative sense, and it's barely audible for your ear as far as what's changing it. After all, you will be playing it on your lap or you will be holding it anyways. So. Now you can play a shaker and play that. You can use the cajon and you can use this with the cajon as a combination type thing. Now, let's say you're standing up and you wanna get it higher, okay? Well, put the snare stand, we take the snare.